Hi there, and welcome to this feedback session. So this is the end of week one of my online art class, Becoming a Better Artist by Practicing Drawing. So I'm really pleased to say I've had quite a bit of work handed in. Um, if you are new to this channel or you're following along, hopefully you'll still find some of this feedback useful. So I'm just going to go over some of the sketches and make a few points. Um, just a little bit of a recap. The focus for this week was about practicing drawing and really getting into the habit of doing a bit of drawing every day. So in one of my videos, I talked about the morning pages exercises, which I've adapted slightly for artists. And the idea there is to do a few little studies every day. And a good way to do it is by getting an A4 page and folding it in four and then trying to fill up four little corners. And I'm really pleased to see um, quite a few of you have had a go at it and uh, with some good results. Now, what I talked about um, when you're learning to draw is getting feedback. So this is what I'm going to try and do is give you some constructive feedback. I'll go through show you what everyone's handed in and then I'll just try and make a few broad points um, that I'd like you to just think about in uh, next week's work. OK. So starting off with Sarah's, uh, she's got a nice um, picture of a blue tit there and we've got some work handed in by Alison. Nice sort of tonal study there and uh, more from Alison. That's another Alison, Alison M. OK, yeah, so this is good, showing a bit of use of mixed media um, and I like this uh, clothes peg down there, so that's good. Um, I really like this study of a sheep. That's Alison again. OK, so we've got lots of good work. Um, so let's just start by making a few broad points. So I've got Lindsay's um, uh, work here. This is Lindsay who comes to my Brettingham class. So you'll notice that what we have is we have an object in space. OK, so we have an object. Um, there's no sort of border. OK, I'm just going to put in a border here. So there's no sort of um, compositional sort of um, sort of separating of the drawings. And um, what we're left with is, as I say, an object that's isolated. Now, that's not a problem and uh, it's not uncommon for artists to do that. But that's what I would call a sort of study. And what I'm going to be trying to encourage you to do, certainly next week, is um, is to start thinking about including the background um, and you're going to use the background as a way to understand better the objects that you are drawing. And another point I would just make with this, um, you'll see, Lindsay, she's got these nice lines that come in like that. Now, these lines, lines like that that go over the form, okay, are very useful. In fact, if I do a few like that, I know this isn't what the... You might not have seen these. These sorts of lines are what I would call wrapping lines and um, they are used often in life drawing. OK, so I'm just drawing a few on here as well. And what they do is they help describe to the viewer the three dimensional form that you're looking at. OK, um, so it's useful to be aware of them because when you just have an outline, that's like a contour drawing and you can do a lot with the contour drawing and we'll be saying a bit more about that next week. Um, but before you get into shading to describe form, you can use line and line weight to um, sort of suggest the three dimensional nature of the objects you're looking at. And so using these wrapping lines and lines that go over the form like that um, can be very useful. OK, so I would just say just to be aware of those and think about those. The other thing I'm going to just point out with a few of them is line weight. OK, so if um, let's look at let's go for another one. Let's go back. Oh, Lois is there. OK, so if we look at this page um, of Lois's work, again, some very nice studies. Um, if we step back from it though if we just reduce it there what you might notice is um, as far as tone goes everything is almost done with the same pressure so you imagine you've got your pencil um, when you press really hard so there's a little bit down there with the shadow you're going to get darks now I know if I've got a pencil I can probably push a bit harder than that 
and I can get a bit more tonal range, okay? So one of the things that I encourage people to do when they're drawing is try to vary the pressure that you draw with and it will create more interesting lines and also more interesting drawings, okay? So a good exercise to do before you start is just at the edge of your page, just to scribble for a bit and try to go from the darkest dark to the lightest light and then use that as a reminder of when you're actually working. Most people tend to stay within a, a narrower band of tonal pressure, okay? Variation will make for better drawings. So this is from Margaret who comes to my Felix Stowe class and I think this is actually quite a good example. She has actually managed to get some quite strong darks in there. Okay, overall the composition, she has introduced tonal values and um, she could have maybe pushed that a little bit further. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a, a quick example. Let's see if we go for a bit bigger. Um, oh, we don't want it to be too heavy. So let's say we've got this, um, there's a seagull sitting on a table here. So the table is going to be facing upwards, so it's uh, facing the sky. Um, so if we were to introduce a, um, a sort of darker tone there, perhaps not that bluey grey, but let's just go around there. So let's say that was a bit darker. I'm going to use something a bit closer. Okay, so these sheds, they're going to be just a slightly, they're more of a mid value, okay? And what that would do is, maybe you can see this, is it means that now the table has become a lighter object um, surrounded by shadow, maybe with a bit of a cast shadow underneath, okay? So just, you have to, when you're introducing tone, you're trying to think about where's the light coming from. So the light's normally coming from above or the sky. And so that's why she's put in a little shadow under the seagull. But you see, if I put that in, it just explains a bit more about what's going on, perhaps with the darker sort of underbelly. And it doesn't have to be particularly complex. It just has to be consistent, okay? So for example, there's some shadow on the side of this pot. So then maybe the, the light would, there'd be a bit more shadow on the bird and the shadow would extend that way, you see? Um, but yeah, it's a good example of tonal variation, different line weights. So there's a line weight of that back wall, which is very faint. And then there's some harder lines at the front there. So I think that's a, that's a really good example. So we've got Mary here, and I think this is excellent, really nice work, Mary. Um, very sort of controlled uh, line. So similar issue in that it is still isolated objects on a white page. So again, I'm not saying that's bad, but maybe next week, try to think a little bit more about your background and um, set your objects up so that the background and your primary object are interacting a little bit. Um, you can also perhaps see the issue I'm talking about with line weight in that these all have a similar line. But there is your writing at the bottom is a bit darker and that's actually quite good. It adds a bit of variation and you have got a few touches. But yeah, see if you can explore that tonal range a bit more. Okay. So let's see what we've got here. This is Phil. And uh, some really nice studies here. Quite a difficult angle on this truck here, looking down on it. And again, just great to see, you know, finding everyday subjects and giving them a go. Hopefully though, you can see some of the points I've uh, mentioned already. These are isolated objects um, with just blank space around them. So uh, it doesn't have to be everything, but we would like to see a little bit more um, going on there and uh, more of fills. So again, if we look at this one down here, um, so this one with the figures on the road, that has more tonal variation. You can see that the dark's got a bit darker at the back um, and that has actually made that perhaps a little bit more uh, of an interesting sketch, okay? So it's definitely something to uh, to play with. Um, with this cup, um, there's some light and shade on there, which is good. Um, 
but the shadow isn't perhaps saying the same thing in terms of lighting as the direction of the light okay so um the shadow sort of implies we've got a line there a line there so that sort of says that that's shadow so the light would have to be coming this way okay so it's catching on this side so we've got shadow there okay and then yep shadow here so that's fine but what that means is that the the cup would be more around this way i think if the lighting was coming that way so again trust your observation but try to look it can be made more complex when you've got multiple light sources so when you're setting up subjects and you want to get more interested in tone um putting it by a window or having less light will make that all a lot easier and see more of fills so again the paintbrush there stands out to me as um, a really nice sketch I love the texture of the paper sort of coming through there just giving it that grainy quality and uh, really nice and I think again ex example where the stronger tonal values actually make for a, a better drawing okay and we've got Richard so really nice work by Richard again good studies now if I just take this as an example um, again it's pencil and it's all done slightly slightly light just I mean maybe it's personal taste but again if you're going to use pencil make sure you are pushing hard enough to get some um, tonal variation so let's have a look okay so I'm going to increase the contrast slightly Let's see if we can do a bit better than that. So I'm trying to increase the contrast by using Photoshop. Now, certainly with this globe here, maybe you can see that that sort of looks a bit stronger. It looks a bit more, it's more of a confident line. Um, we go back to how it was um so that's that's i think the area that you should work on there richard um you know get stuck in the drawing is quite tight so that means that the lines are quite precise and um i would say try to vary it have some lines so like in this um sketch here, this is a really nice little study the line obviously you've drawn from life so you've perhaps drawn a bit quicker and that slightly more expressive line is starting to come through. So that's something you could explore. And let's see. And we've got Teresa's work here. Um, so Teresa is, you know, she's um, an excellent sort of um, drawer and painter. She's done a lot of practice and uh, goes to life drawing classes and uh, all those sorts of things. And uh, here you can see, you know, she's incorporated some really nice use of tone. So that means that there are some darks here um, and sort of, you know, they're heavy darks. So she's not afraid to, you know, get in and get some pressure on the pencil. And you'll see that tends to make for a much stronger. You see the light side of this face would be lost against a white page. Um, so, you know, as a rule of thumb, you know, try to introduce at least some darks um, and you'll get more dramatic pictures that way. But again, nice studies out of the newspaper. So that's exactly the sort of thing we've been after. And uh, we've got another one here. This is Ned from Life. So again, you can see from Life, it has the energy of life drawing in that it's quick marks done as a response to uh, something that's moving and that tends to come through in the mark making and the line quality so that's good and uh, yeah there's a nice sort of sense of energy in the sketch which I think is uh, is excellent so again you know if I was just being a bit picky I would just say also you know with these sorts of sketches try to train yourself so that you start to vary the line weight so in the hand where the fingers go in and you get these dark creases you know they're particularly good places to get a bit more pressure anyway so that's a quick overview so the takeaway points there are 
try to avoid leaving large white areas in your page, isolated objects um, just simply drawn um, with nothing behind them. Um, as I say, next week's video will have a bit more to say about that. Um, try to vary your line weight a bit more. Um, I'll just go back to Alison's we'll go to Alison's study here. So this is nice. This, so I like this study because it was starting to introduce a bit more tone. OK, and tone will really bring your drawing to life. So we will cover that in one of the weeks ahead. Um, but as a rule of thumb, you know, try to get at least, say, maybe 30 percent of your um, sketch should be dark. You don't want um, just, you know, pure a, a white page. So something like I would have considered here. So let's say we've got this strong light on this sort of um, looks like a sort of ruin or something. Uh, maybe that's Bury St Edmunds or somewhere. Um, so again, contrast. So you play the light against the dark. OK, so we would sketch in like that. And again, it would look a bit better with pencil. So now that light shape has got something to play against, you see? And so that's just a it's a, it's a good strategy. And Alison did also ask me about hatching and how the work can tend to get a bit smudgy. And what would I recommend about that? So I will say a bit more a bit about um, shading when we do sort of tonal values. I would say smudging isn't a problem, um, but if you are going to do sort of shading, just to basically sort of practice with it. Again, those scribbles at the beginning, those warm up exercises, just scribbling in the side can just get you um, warmed up. And then when you do your tone, it's almost like you want to have a plan. So you see what I did there, which was I said, I'm going to put a light object against, say, a mid a mid ground. So say you work with dark, light and mid value. So we're going to have the side of this is going to be dark. OK, and that's going to be dark and that's going to be dark. And that's going to be dark. OK, the object is light and then that's going to be played against. Everything else is going to be more of a mid value. So that would be like a tonal plan. It's a sort of simplified idea about how the tones are going to work. And that will tend to create a, a stronger, more sort of graphic image. OK, so there's a few ideas to be getting on with. Um, so just carry on. Don't worry too much again about whether they're good or not. Um, the thing at the moment is to keep drawing, but try to use some of these ideas. Uh, play around. If you can use charcoal or something that's going to create darker lines, I think that will really help your drawings come to life. Anyway, I hope some of that was useful and uh, I'll see you again on Monday for next week's lesson. OK, so thanks a lot. Bye.